Hello service people, welcome to another video on the AWS Solutions Architect Associate series. In this one I'm going to explain what you need to know about Route 53. So first of all, what is uh, Route 53? Route 53 is simply the Amazon DNS service. It's highly available and cost effective. You can use it to buy domains and manage them through the AWS console. And of course it integrates with the with other AWS resources. So it's very useful to have everything in there. You have your domain in there. You can decide and create uh, DNS records from the uh, Route 53 service. For example, you need to know the different uh, routes features that it has and you will be tested on how to use it and for which use case to use it so let's go through there are like six in total they are not difficult so don't worry we're gonna go through all of them now as always in the second part of the video i'm gonna answer some of the aws questions so stay tuned till the end of the video let's start with the first routing uh, feature it's called simple routing and as you can Imagine it used to configure like standard DNS record, usually it's for or A record. So you, you can route the traffic to a single resource. It can be used either with like a, a single resource. So you put the IP address of your resource, or you can specify multiple values, which are of course, multiple IP addresses for a single record. This is called the multi-value answer. And this is used when you have, let's say, when you have like a multiple number of web servers, all of them with uh, an, an elastic IP, and you want to use the simple routing and put like more than one IP IP address in the single record. In this way, AWS is going to reply with uh, a multi-value and the DNS and your user can basically go to one of the IP address that you have specified in the record. Second one is weighted routing. So basically with weighted routing, you can associate multiple resources with a single DNS record and specify the weight of the traffic that you want to go to a specific uh, IP address. The way you do it is that you put the weight for each specific record and then AWS is going to divide the weight by the sum of the weights for all the records. So if you put like five as a weight for resources A, five to, five to resources B, five to resource C, it's going to be, to resource A is going to be one third of the traffic and same for B and C. It's going to be like five divided by 15 and the same thing for resource B and C. So the use case for this is when you want to weight your traffic through different resources. So be careful when you see on the question how to weight the traffic, uh, weighted routing is the way to go. Next one is failover routing. So failover routing is used when you have when you want to configure like healthy and also a fallback resource to your traffic so with the failover routing you can uh, route the traffic to a specific resource and when the resource is not healthy route 53 is going to fall back the traffic to the uh, fallback resource so when you specify the failover routing you have to specify two resources one for the active traffic so for the when so when the resource is healthy and the other one for the fallback this is called also active passive failover over. So remember that if you see active passive is is basically the failover routing. And as I said, it needs like a primary and secondary resource. The healthy check is handled by uh, route 53. So you don't have to worry about that. Then we have geolocation routing, which basically route 53 choose the resource based on the geography location of your users. And this is useful when you have to localize your content. So maybe you want to show the website in a specific language, or you want to show resource only restricted to that specific country. It is configurable by continent, country, and also state in, if you are in the US. And this also in the question is usually used when they ask you to, when there is like a context of using different website for the geolocation of the user, you want to go with geolocation routing. Then we have geoproximity routing, which is something a bit different because it routes the traffic based on the geography location of your user and resources. You can configure this using like a bias. So you put the bias of the region that you want to use and route 53 is going to uh, route more or less traffic based on the value of the bias. Last one is latency, which is also this one. And this is very important because it, it comes up on the questions uh, very often. So Latency basically route the traffic based on the AWS region with the lowest latency. And this is, of course, uh, computed by Route 53. You can create like latency records for your sources in multiple AWS region. So based on the latency of the AWS region and from where the user is uh, requesting the resource, Route 53 is going to handle the traffic and forward it to the lowest latency region. All right, now that we've seen all the uh, different, you know, routing features, let's go through the AWS questions and reply to a few of them. All right, first question. Your company has web servers deployed in all availability zones in the AWS EU West 1 region. These web servers provide this service for people in Ireland. The servers are deployed using static IPs and you need to configure Route 53 through the traffic to these IPs. 
How would you do it? Okay, so here's, as I said before, we have different web servers. They all use static IP and you want to route this traffic to all of these IP. So the answer, we need to find some with, something with the multi-value answer routing policy. Um, so let's start. So weighted routing policy, this can work, but you have to weight the based on the number of resources, the traffic. So it's not ideal. It, it can work, but it's not ideal. Multi-value answer is the, is the answer, as I said, is the correct answer. Because in this way, you can configure based on a single record, multiple IP, and Route 53 is going to uh, forward the traffic to those multiple IP, which is exactly what is uh, being asked in this question. So let's go on to the next one. Your client is planning to use Route 53 as the DNS provider. They want to be able to point a domain name to an existing cloud from distribution. How would you do it? Okay, so here we want to, yeah, we want to route the traffic to an existing cloud from distribution. And when you have to do this with root 53, there is a specific record for that and it's called alias record. So we need to find an answer that mentioned the alias record so we can, we can point the traffic to a cloud from distribution. Create an A record which points to the cloud from IP. This is not possible because first of all, we don't have the cloud from IP and then this is not ideal. Create an alias record that points to the cloud from distribution. This is the uh, right answer because we need to create, as I said, and this is like a special record that works only for AWS resources and it's called alias record and lets you route your, the, the traffic to a specific AWS resource, in this case, a cloud from distribution. Create a C name. This can work, but it's not ideal. As I said, the best option is the alias record. A company hosts its service on EU West 1 and after a big round of investment, they want to expand the service to APAC. So they decide to extend the application to AP South 1. They want to ensure that performance is the same as the application hosting in Europe. What should be done? Okay. So here there is a company that wants to expand the traffic. Create a classic elastic load balancing through traffic between regions. No. Create an application load balancer, this not make sense. Create a latency based route 53 policy to route traffic based on the location. Yes, this is the right answer because based again on the latency of the resources, this is the best way if you want to, you know, have the service in two different regions. So route 53 is gonna compute the latency for us and forward the traffic to the lowest latency service. So that's great. Answer C is the correct one. An advertising company is launching a new campaign next week and they expect a spike in the traffic. They want to be able to fail over to a static website in the event of a load failure. So the keyword here is failover. How would you do it? Use root 53 failover policy, use a cloud from distribution or S3 bucket as the failover option. Yes, this I really like this, this answer. Add more load balancer and service if the application fails. This is not ideal. Enable failover to a different region. This is very generic. Add AWS Shield service in front of the instances. The if you don't know that uh, AWS Shield is to prevent DDoS attack, but this is not what is being asked by the question. So the correct answer is A. Put a failover policy. Use CloudFront distribution or S3 as the failover option. Okay. Next question. You have an application on AWS composed of EC2 instances, load balancers, auto scaling, and Route 53. You want to enable blue-green deployments, which Route 53 policy you should use. Okay, so enable blue-green deployments is basically being able to have two different environments at the same time with a weight. So let's say you want to use 50% on environment A, which is like blue, and 50% on environment B, which can be the green. In this case, as I said, we need a weight policy. So the answer is going to be answer letter D, because to enable blue-green deployments, we need to be able to weight the traffic to different resources. Next question. A company wants to host an active, active website between the on-premises infrastructure and AWS. Okay. They want the traffic to be equally distributed. Which policy do you need to achieve this? Okay. So they want the traffic to be equally distributed. And um, the only way to do that is by a weight policy again, with like 50% of the weight on the on-premises infrastructure and the other 50% on the AWS. And you can, you can specify the weight when you configure the root 53 record. All right, last question. Company has four web servers with static IPs. They want to ensure that the DNS returns multiple IP addresses. How would you do that? Okay, this is again, very similar to the first question. We have four web servers with static IPs and they want to 
the DNS to returns multiple IP addresses, the only available answer is going to be multi-value answer routing. Because as I said, I'm going to say it again, you can configure multiple IP addresses with this uh, configuration. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. If you have any question on Route 53 and how to handle this subject for the exam, feel free to ask on the comments. Remember to subscribe if you want to see uh, new videos on this subject and also on serverless and see you on the next one.